Welcome to a new episode of Video Car Review, our international branch of Ausfahrt TV. And as always, I'm your host, Mr. Z. I call myself Mr. Z because my English is kind of tacky. If you haven't seen our format before, be aware it's a little bit longer, a little bit, a little bit longer than uh, other formats you might know. So check out the description text of this very video because there you find jump markers, jump markers to the different sections of our video. Our videos are always uh, structured in the very same way and so you can compare cars section by section or you say well I want to see one chapter today one chapter tomorrow and so on or worst case man this is boring I just want to skip to the next chapter here we go um, besides that in the description text you find the technical specs of our test car as well as links to the competitors if we have reviews of them well those of you who know me already they know I'm a Mercedes-Benz fanboy I am. I confess, that's just a fact. So, how does a Mercedes Panboy review a 7 Series BMW? Well, I gotta say, even as a Mercedes fanboy, I fell in love with this baby. Just because it drives so nice. I'm not even talking about the luxury items inside. Just the pure driving, this baby just make me fall in love. So. <laughs> don't don't worry it's not like oh mercedes can do this better and mercedes can that, uh, do that better but maybe every once in a while i will do a little comparison to the s-class back in 1977 bmw introduced the 7 series as a successor of the e3 and uh, back last year in 2015 they introduced the sixth product generation of the 7 series that's the model we're driving today unfortunately i wasn't invited to the debut BMW and I wasn't invited to the press drive either and it took a while since we finally got the test car but I'm happy that we did because I really enjoy this car oh do we have competitors in the market well you know I'm very close-minded as a German so I just see two brands uh, the Audi A8 and the Mercedes-Benz S-Class but you could probably name the Jaguar XJ and the uh, Lexus LS and I'm not really sure I bet there are a bunch of competitors on the American market as well because for Americans this is just a compact size car right all right guys now all about engines and all about numbers uh, listen to me BMW is offering the um, 7 series with several petrol and two diesel engines so starting out with a 730 that comes with 258 horses then we got the 740 that comes with 326 horses and it's an inline uh, six cylinder the 750 has a V8 with 450 horses and there's supposed to be a come uh, a 760 with a V12 and 610 horses we got two diesel options there's one with uh, 256 horses and the other one with 320 horses and they're having a plug-in hybrid version as well it's a 740e that has the engine of the 730 with 258 horses and an electric engine with 95 horses and they come with a system power of 326 horses which is the same like the 740e I. Oh, uh, by the way, you know BMW, and if you know and love BMW, you know it's rear wheel drive always. You know, rear wheel drive, driving fun. That's BMW, that's what they stand for. But be aware that almost for every uh, engine, you have the choice between rear wheel drive and all-wheel drive called X-Drive uh, for BMW. Besides that, all the uh, engines comes with the same transmission or you have the choice between two transmissions actually, but they're both automatic transmission with eight gears. And on we go with numbers. Here's the heart of our test car. That is the uh, three liter inline six cylinder that has 326 horses. It's good for maximum torque of 450 Newton meters. And you get them in a range between 1,380 and 4,500 RPM. As mentioned before, uh, we have the choice between X drive, so all wheel drive and rear wheel drive. Our car is equipped with rear wheel drive. And you have the choice between a regular um, eight 
eight, eight gear automatic transmission and the sporty one called Steptronic. And we got the sporty one, the Steptronic eight gear automatic transmission in here. Now the basic specs to our test car, the BMW 740LI, it accelerates from 0 to 100 km per hour or 0 to 62 miles per hour in 5.6 seconds, but it feels faster. And the top speed is reached at 250 km per hour, which equals 155 miles per hour. But I've been on the Autobahn and I know it even runs 260 km per hour, which equals 162 miles per hour. The gas tank of the 2016 BMW 740Li will take 78 liters or 20.6 US gallons. BMW gives a fuel consumption figure of 7 liters for every 100 km driven or 33.6 miles per US gallon. Which means that under perfect conditions you can drive up to 1110 km or 690 miles without stopping for fuel. CO2 emissions for the 2016 BMW 740Li should be 162 grams per kilometer according to BMW. The long version of the 7 series BMW has a length of 5.24 meters or 206 inches with a wheelbase of 3.21 meters or 126 inches. It is 1.48 meters high so 58 inches and it is 1.9 meters wide so 75 inches. From mirror tip to mirror tip the span is 2.17 meters or 85 inches. For the turning circle you need at least 12 point for the turning circle you need at least 12.9 meters or 42.3 feet of free space. The curb weight comes in at 1825 kilograms or 4023 pounds. The maximum loaded weight is 2500 kilograms or 5512 pounds. In Germany our test car would cost round about 140000 euros. Well, since it took BMW so long uh, to provide me this test car, I'm not going into differences between the old 7 Series and the new 7 Series. You have read about this, so this review is just about the normal stuff we do. So, uh, talking about trim levels, there's none. You buy the 7 Series or you don't. You don't have a choice between trim levels, but they offer two packages. One is called Pure Excellence, the other one is called M Sport Package. And you can even combine both exterior packages. As far as I've seen on my sheet, none of the packages is on our test car here. All right, so the 7 Series comes by factory settings already with LED headlights. And as an option, you get laser high beams laser baby so uh, if you're driving faster than 60 kilometers per hour you can use your high beams with a laser and they um, brighten up the darkest night up to 600 meters in front of you and not only um, the headlights are full LED but the turning signal is LED everything is just full LED even the fog lamps are made with LED techniques. Besides that, you have cornering light, you have uh, turning light, and um, the, the light is adapted to the speed you're driving. And if uh, traffic is coming ahead of you, you can leave your high beams on because the uh, um, camera in front and the headlights will arrange the lights this way that the guy in front of you is not being disturbed by your high beams. Well, I'm sorry, I can just go in metrics now and... Uh, hello America. Sorry guys, just try to calculate or use a uh, sheet. Maybe we can, you know, put a subline in here. Yeah, Toby says he puts a subline in here. So, uh, we get the long version, the short version. <laughs> no, listen to my words. The short version of the 7 Series is uh, 5 meter and 10 centimeters long. So, we got a wheelbase of 3.07 meters, while the long version has 14 centimeters more of length and more in the wheelbase. So we got uh, 
two four meters in length of the long version and a wheelbase of uh, three meters and 21 centimeters so all the length goes for the uh, rear compartment because here is the part where the boss sits the color of our test car is called sophisti sophisto gray brilliant effect metallic <laughs> and it's one of 14 colors you can choose from if you hear 14 colors you might want to sing oh yeah all the rainbow i can choose a color you know no you can't because it feels like 15 of those 14 colors look like black uh, they have different shades of gray i would say even <laughs> never mind now it's it's a business sedan, you know, so you, you have to have a business color. And you even can choose some right colors, but you, you have really a bunch of black in there. Okay, uh, in the basis version, the 7 Series stands on 18-inch alloys. Uh, we do have 19-inch on here, but you can upgrade even up to 20 inch alloys and just because i know it we got a, a ground clearance here of 13 centimeters well uh, we were driving to our location here and toby was driving behind me so when he got out of the car he was like oh man this is the most boring bmw from the rear and i was like no wait i like it and he said well what is this you know is this round or is this edgy i cannot decide you know what's it supposed to be and i just told him well it looks <laughs> elegant you know pure elegance well so we have two different opinions here doesn't matter um i don't have much to say to the back except here it stands we got the 740 li and you can uh, get rid of this as well we got the third braking light up in the uh, rear window and here we got the full led rear lights in l shape as we know them from uh, bmw so if you got led in the front of course we got full led in the rear as well and uh, going a little bit farther down we got two exit pipes well actually those are sort of fake but uh, you know I'm a Mercedes fanboy, so keep in mind, you know, the GLE, GLC, GL whatever, where they have those fake things here and the exit pipe is somewhere, or it's like this tiny inside. Well, BMW use big blends here, but the uh, exit pipes in the blends are not too tiny as well, so they could have just put the round things there, which I would have appreciated. All right, guys, even so, uh, the boss has to sit in the rear actually i'm rather the driver i like to drive the door in the front is really huge as well but we got plenty of space so why should it be small it opens in an 80 degree angle and uh, let's <laughs> shows me the beautiful uh, dorsal panel which is illuminated and it's illuminated with the color of the ambient light inside whenever i stand here i'm sort of like I'm the driver, you know, the driver. Dun, 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 dun. No? Okay, more sophisticated. Well, it's really easy to get inside the BMW 7 Series as a driver. You have to lower yourself just a little bit, but there's so much space to get inside the car, it's really easy. And if you're stupid enough to open the door all the way, you have to lean out quite a bit to uh, reach it and close it, but it's really easy. Well, welcome inside. First of all, I will want to start the engine real quick because the steering wheel goes up once you get outside of the car and it stays up so you have an easy entry while getting in the car. And um, yeah, I just wanted here in my position. So uh, first of all, I always check the materials and I know this is leather. Ah, yeah, real leather on the dashboard. Then we got a wood application and uh, some high glossy paint. And down here, that is artificial leather, but still feeling soft touch. And down here starts with leather again. This is leather for sure. It's all really soft and sweet. And um, in the door, we got uh, leather on top, wood, uh, some brushed alloy stuff or just alloy and here leather again so 
It's really nice. The uh, um, ceiling is covered with Alcantara and even on the A pillar we got Alcantara. So you really have to look close to find hard plastics like here on the um, steering wheel. But that's it. That's really an upper class business sedan solution and um, premium quality inside. So the material is really nice wherever you touch. I think it's very nice. And um, it's a BMW, so I'm happy because the whole center is driver oriented, which I like. I think it's pretty cool. And uh, so the, the display is facing me and the whole uh, body down here is facing me. Uh, by the way, we, it's the first time we have a touch screen, so we can really touch. Well, it's at least it's the first, first time for me in a BMW where I can use touch controls on the display. Uh, I used the jog shuttle anyway because it's closer, you know, while driving. I don't like to fiddle around on the uh, thing, but, you know, once you stand, it's pretty neat to be able to, to touch. And by the way, the uh, 7 Series comes as an option with uh, gest gestures. So you can use gestures. Um, at certain points, let me go to Spotify. Yeah, so I can. Why is it not working now? <laughs> okay, shut up and play again. Well, for some reason, I think here's a sensor, and this way I can. Make it loud and uh, increase and decrease the volume. Well, for some reason, it worked the whole time. Now I'm trying to show it. It's not working anymore. I better I turn this off here. Because I can't play music on my videos for legal reasons. Um, okay, so this part is uh, facing me. We got um, the touch display here. Then one uh, button row for the infotainment system. And down here, that's all the air condition. Uh, on the left side, we got uh, buttons for the light things. We got a multifunctional steering wheel and two uh, sticks on the steering wheel. Everything is good in reach. Uh, concerning the space we have here, first of all, the seats. Between the seats, we have more than my skater welcome uh, greeting here. So it's really, you have a lot of space between the seats. And so this is my kingdom, sort of, and this is his or hers or whatever and uh, you really have a lot of space even so the windscreen is pretty close to me to the steering wheel so we don't have this you know spacious front here it's still okay you know because this car is so big you, you don't get the feeling that anything is tight besides that we have the swing here that makes the car look even bigger i like it yeah, i really do uh okay and headspace, by the way, um, I can put a fist between my head and uh, the ceiling. Besides that, the seat is lower to the very lowest position, as I always said. So far, so good. Ergonomy, check. Material, check. Space, check. Then we go on with the um, seat belt. And surprise, surprise, you cannot adjust the height of the seat belts on your shoulder for whatever reason. But the length of the seat belt is quite impressive. If this would be a tiny car, I would probably be here outside the window already. And uh, beige, uh, the color is beige, like the interior. Then I'm sitting on comfort seats, and they're, it's not only their name, they're comfortable as well. Everything is electrically, so I can adjust the height of the um, headrest. Besides that, the headrest has little wings, you know, that's a normal thing. And I can pull them out to have a little bit more uh, head support. So, you know, my head's not shaking around while, well, you know, cornering and all that. Right now, this is fine. Uh, of course, I can adjust the backrest and the front seat. I can extend the seat cushion even up to, I think, five centimeters, maybe even more. I have an electric lumbar support, you know, for ways that I can use. And I can adjust the side support as well, you know, loosen it for just cruising or 
put it really tight for sporty driving. So you got all the options. Besides that, we have a, a seat heating, of course, three intensities and an air condition for the seats and I can activate both at the same time. I'm fine with the heating. I'm not so pleased with the air condition. I think it could blow a little bit harder. Sorry, that was a hard cut because I uh, decided to switch the um, language of the system here. So you have the right language as well. Okay, I was going to tell you that in the door panel I have one button that enables me to activate the massage function. Uh, you have three intensities that you can either choose on the display or via the button because here you see the three uh, digits as well. And we got uh, several options here, eight different programs we can use. Uh, the only thing I know is the whole body exercise is quite fun because uh, it lifts the seat cushion as well. So your butt is, you know, kind of getting a workout as well, which is uh, kind of strange when you're driving fast on the autobahn and, and your butt is like shaking around or dancing. But uh, very comfortable indeed. So uh, three intensities uh, we can choose from, eight different programs. The seats are very comfortable. I've driven four hours straight in the seats and I can say, yes, they are comfortable. Plus, you have the choice between, you know, having a rather sporty setup with a side support or a rather, you know, chilly cruising setup. And I like it. They're not only comfortable, but they give you a lot of support as well. Uh, there's another button here uh, that I can activate. And now I can do all the options I just did for the passenger seat, which is important as it is a chauffeur's car that you want to adjust the seat. Besides that, I can store my seat with two uh, memory slots, but as well, I can use this memory slots as well from the driver's side for the passenger side. So uh, if I have, you know, driving my kid to school, I can say, okay, passenger side, space one, kid setup or, you know, in my case, wife set up. That would be two options, you know, or chick one, chick two. That's maybe more familiar for you guys. Okay, I got this, I got this. Everything, yeah, seats are really awesome, damn pretty cool. Then our steering wheel, it's covered with leather, really nice leather too, not too hard, not too soft, and it's a sports steering wheel, at least what, that's what my setablist said. Uh, we can adjust it electrically, and I will go all the way out first, and up, and then I will pull it in. And down, and out, well, you know, those electric steering wheels. Mm, I'm sorry, I fall asleep. But I want you to see the full radius. And uh, quite frankly, when I was uh, driving in the car, I always put the seat to the lowest position, you know. And so when I was to start driving, I was like, no, I need a, a deeper, the steering wheel itself, but that's already the lowest point. So I really had to raise my seat in order to have my ideal uh, driving position, which I didn't do because I like to sit low. Okay, by the way, uh, there's a uh, heating for the steering wheel as well, so you can heat it up if you want to. We got shifting pedals on both sides, of course. Uh, they're made of plastic, but they're... Um, the rear, oh, it feels like leather. At least it's a nice way of uh, plastic, I guess. Uh, it has a little grip and it's easy to shift this way. It's a multifunctional steering wheel. On the left side, we got all the buttons to control the speed limiter and the adaptive cruise control and uh, switch the distance in, in order for the adaptive cruise control, how far you want to be, stay away from the car in front of you. On the right side, however, we have all the buttons to control the infotainment system as well from your thumb. 
Um, the board computer, uh, to control the board computer, we have just one push button on the turning signal indicator. And there's a second button for the automatic high beams. And on the windscreen wiper, there's a button as well, the auto button, which, you know, whenever it rains, it starts using the windscreen wiper. Okay, it's heated. Got the steering wheel all covered. Guess so. So, the mirrors. I think for such a huge car, the mirrors are kind of small, even more sporty. You know, rather put it in good marketing slang, sporty mirrors. Uh, however, you see enough to keep the traffic behind you uh, in sight. Uh, the re inner rear mirror, however, is big enough to see everything what's going on behind. Uh, you see the whole rear window, plus your boss if he's sleeping in there. So that's good size all together you get a good idea turning my head around my shoulder there's no blind spot here but the b pillar is not really small the other way around a pillar fine b pillar fine c pillar fine too no blind spot you have pretty much a good overview in this car uh, besides that the car comes uh, as an option with a rear camera or as another option with a bird view a 360 degree camera i will show you this in a minute and now we can go on to the dashboard i will just start the car for you so you see all the lights and what's going on well, it's all digital, but overall it's a classical setup. So we got a speedometer on the left side going up to 260 kilometers per hour and the car runs 260 kilometers per hour. So that's just the right size. Uh, next to it, we find the control for the gas tank or the petrol tank in this case. On the other uh, way around, we have the RPM meter going up to 8,000 RPM while the red range or 7,500. Well, the red range starts at 7,000. That's what it looks like. See the digits grow even? That's pretty cool. And down here is the coolant temperature. Besides so that, in the center up there, we have an analog clock and the outside temperature in Celsius in our case. And down here, this line is actually the board computer. It's a small line to switch the camera. And it's total and uh, my, uh, trip mileage. That's um, oh, that's the navigation uh, mode. I just put something in the navigation system. Uh, this is uh, fuel consumption, the current fuel consumption, and uh, 14.5 the average fuel consumption. That's the average speed and the average fuel consumption. And you get an idea. I've driven 1,300 kilometers and I have an average speed of almost 100 kilometers per hour. That makes sense that I have a high fuel consumption of 14.5 liters now. Well, actually at 14.4, but I'm standing here for quite a while. Or you can just disable it all the way. In the center, you see uh, stuff like, you know, what's ever going on with the uh, assist systems. Besides that, down here next to the gear shifting thing, I have uh, the driving programs, Eco Pro, Comfort and Sport and uh, Adaptive. So once I put the car in Eco Pro, the whole setup changed. It's getting blue, you know. The rev meter gets another setup, but the information pretty much stays the same. Comparison Sport again, and uh, no, Comfort again, and here's Sport. Sport, we have a big digit for the digital speed and the driving program um, for the other one so once i put the car in manual you know i can see this and driving is the same way sport and so on all right so far so good do i get everything adaptive is just giving us same way down here you see adaptive then Okay, it's predictive adjustment of vehicle settings, blah, blah, blah. If I put the car in reverse, I do see the 360 degree camera on the one side and the rear camera on the other side. And now which with a touch screen, I can really, you know, choose the different cameras here easily, which I like. I think it's pretty cool. And I like the animation. Look at this, this flight, oops, this flight mode. Woo, woo. I think it's pretty awesome. It's not that you need it all the time, but every once in a while, 
it should be really handy once you park your car and all that. So I think that's pretty much awesome. And while I'm showing you the display anyway, I can uh, hop through all the different stuff real quick. So this is the infotainment system. Uh, I can choose between, you know, DAB, FM, AM. My phone is hooked up. I got Spotify and plus I'm really uh, quickly jumping into another app. So this is my Amazon uh, app. Got recognized here. Why is it not working? In English it did. Well, see, on my phone now, Amazon is activated. It should come up here as well. Oh, here it is. So it's popping up real quick, actually. I don't know what happened. And I was pretty amazed, you know, BMW is not supporting um, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but they're adapting the important apps that you can use them in the car, which I like and I think it's pretty cool. So, but back to Spotify, just that you get an idea, you see the track. I don't have split screen enabled now, so, you know, you can do this as well. But here we got the cover on one side and all the information on the other side. I can go even through playlist and to be honest actually this is uh, working better than on Apple CarPlay. Not right now for some reason, I don't know why. Maybe because I use the other app on my iPhone. Okay, see now it's working. Pretty cool playlist by the way, not from my me but good person who is uh, really into rock music and I can use them. Okay, uh, then we got the com stuff, so all the phone stuff. I want to do this. Uh, here we got the map view. There's a route enabled already. You can zoom in and out. And I'm um, Going back to the menu because we got media now, communication, navigation, connected drive, you know, is all the online stuff boring. Well, at least for me, it's boring. If you want to see it, buy a BMW and try it out. And here we got uh, various settings for the vehicle. Uh, for instance, um, interior light, exterior light, and so on. Well, whatever you want to do you can put it in here i'm just scrolling through real quick so that you get an idea of what's all going on we can use different driver profiles see the vehicle status oil and so on technology in action is uh, uh, this driving dynamics part and here you see the fuel consumption and once again see i've driven this car before with less than 10 liters on 100 kilometers so the average fuel consumption is really a, uh, a result of my sporty driving on the autobahn here's a sport view oh that was stupid <laughs> shit <laughs> never mind Okay, you see the gauges uh, run for sporty view and uh, what else do we have? Driving information, oh well, you know, trip computer and no, I don't want automatic reset, I don't want to reset it at all, onboard computer, so two different slots. And notifications. I don't even know what it is, but it's there. Okay, and the next step would be stopping this here. Oh, by the way, you can read everything fine during daytime and nighttime. Next step would be to show you the ambient light. I hope I will be able to get some shots here in the dark, but it's getting dark so late, so... Um, I'm not sure if I can, but I can at least show you the menu lights, interior lights. So we got uh, different color modes we can choose from. Start out in bronze, orange, white and blue, green, lilac even. And you can 
for the color themes you can choose pl uh, a solid color or the color mixed with white and as you can see here so it's illuminated right here and down here in the foot compartment in the door sill uh, no in the door panel and uh, in the rear as well and you can go back to the menu activate the media player again and uh, turn the car off finally yeah uh, we do have an, a sunroof there's three different sunroofs you can choose from this is one is the cheapest version you can fully open it but it just covers the head of the driver and the passenger next to him of course you can close it as well you can tilt it so open the rear by just pressing the button and if you don't want too much sun in you can even put a shade in front of it so you let the sun stay outside uh, as an option you get a panoramic sunroof so two pieces of uh, glass roof one in the front and one in the back and for the panoramic sunroof there's even an option that works with little leds i haven't seen it and i don't i don't even see pictures but it says that it's supposed to look like like you're looking in the stars with little leds somewhere i don't know no idea but i wanted to mention it at least uh last but not least um the switch for uh, turning on the emergency lights is right on the right spot in the center right here it's illuminated in red even uh, in, in, in during daytime it's easy to find easy to touch yes it would be even more handy to have it up here but this one is just fine and it's looking nice it uh, is integrated nice in the design so everything go away no i'm working no playing now a mosquito i guess so uh finally that's it except for the checking the horn and that's how the horn sounds like on we go with a um, video car review compartment check i show you all the compartments in the car we start out with the door panel i got two bottles with me here plastic bottles they sort of don't fit in the car you know i should have glass bottles at least however this is a 0.7 liter bottle and it hardly fits in the door panels uh, so this half a liter bottle will do a better job but it's hard you know so i think you might fit a liter bottle in there but it might be tough behind it you still have a lot of space then we have this grip that you can use as a little compartment as well on the left next to the steering wheel we have another compartment covered with clothes inside i don't really know what you want to put in there but there is a compartment at least nothing here the next uh, compartment is down here you can slide it um, you can slide it and open it this way in front we have a little compartment with a usb port behind that two cup holders this bottle again does not fit in here whatever i do but the half a liter bottle fits perfectly we got spacers three spacers here around it so it's not even shaking around um, in the center or between the two um, cup holders we got a 12 volt outlet and push it once it slides 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 <laughs> half the way and put it again push it again and it closes then the armrest you can open it to wings here's another smaller compartment another usb port and another uh, 12 volt outlet where in some space for some other stuff period in the um, gloves compartment there's not too much space to be honest it's illuminated yes but not very much space and there's a little block and once you push it it opens and you see two little uh, bottles that is the um, I don't even know how it's what's what's the name is well you have a push button here and you can push it three intensities fragn fragrance fragrance so uh, there's some good smelling stuff in those little bottles and um, once you activate the function you have three intensities again 
uh, you can make the car smell like uh, the stuff in the bottles. And you have the choice between two different smells even, which I like. You remember maybe the S-Class, there you have one smell. Here you got two smells, smaller bottles, but still you can, you know, if you have different drivers and your chick likes one smell, you like the other smell, then you can even switch between the two uh, between the two smells. I think it's pretty neat. Not that you need it, but it does smell good and you smell it. So it's not just a marketing joke. You really smell it. And I like it kind of. Yes, I do. Okay. Gloves compartment checked. Then the sun visors on both sides. We have makeup mirrors with LED lights on it. And next to the mirror, which is pretty big, and I should get a shave for sure. Uh, we have a little clip for tickets. We have handles on uh, all four doors. Besides that, the handles themselves, they have this wood application, which feels nice. Uh, we get reading lights for the driver and the passenger, or we can activate the entry light and this whole thing starts burning, lightening up. Uh, besides that, here's the switch for the sunroof. Okay guys, the long version of the 7 Series is of course not a driver's car, it's a chauffeur's car. You know, it's a limousine sort of. And so... The chef, the boss, the guy who's been driven always sits in the back on the right side. Because if you have the right car, you can flate the seats that you can have a little nap while driving. And for this, the seat in front of you has to be pushed forward. And if the driver is sitting on the seat, you cannot push it forward, obviously. So uh, it's the right side while on the cars with a steering wheel on the right side it's left side but we're having it on the left side so the right side haha -ha. and never mind uh, okay all i want to do is jump inside i just let you know the uh, door sill panel is in the rear as well illuminated all right guys we can do this in two ways the critical way would be like this okay so this is luxury sedan right oh ah but then, you know, being honest, once you get in the car, you nod your head automatically. Oops. So it goes down a little bit. But you see here, the roof line is dropping a little bit. So we have even a Cooper-like roof line. But then again, I, uh, yes, here we're coming. Go, James. Uh, besides that, I would have to lean out really a lot to close this door but most likely i will have someone who does a job for me not me so all right guys i'm sitting here in the rear and i got 13 minutes to cover it all <laughs> because my battery are going low but the german version didn't took much longer so i'm fine i guess it will be all right so uh first of all how do i start uh all the materials as fine in the rear as in the front of course because here sits the boss so he wants you know the same ceiling leather 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 as in the front um we got electric seats here, of course. First of all, I have to say my sitting position in the rear is much higher than in the front, which I don't really understand because of this cooper like shape. They should put me a little bit deeper. And um, I'm sitting here fine. See, I can, you know, adjust the headrest. And uh, now I'm all fine and great and awesome. But um, my uh, colleague, Toby, he was just trying this out. And he's, um, well, I'm 180 centimeters tall, so 5'11". He is uh, 6'5", so 195 centimeters tall. And he had problems reaching the rear. So if you are really a BMW fan and you want this car and you're a little bit taller, Please make sure you try the seats out yourself. Okay, um, how do I start? How do I start? The seats, um, you can adjust them all electrically. You can adjust them. You have a panel here where you can put everything. You have a button here. And I start out with this, a laying position. So once I push the button, uh, Everything is adjusted, the front seat, the front passenger seat goes all the way forward and the seat is putting in a nicer, more comfortable position as well. Um, two things, 
I like better in the S-Class the cushion for sure. The cushion is much nicer in the S-Class and I wonder why BMW didn't order the same cushion. Because in the S-Class it's like you lay back your head and it's like, ah, yes. And here in the BMW is rather like, oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, my seat is all uh, fixed up so I can put my legs up. And now I sit here all comfortable. Oh, what I say, what I like more in the BMW is once the seat is flipped all the way around in the front, as a driver, you can still use the right mirror. While in the S class, I remember having problems this way. Okay, so I'm 180 centimeters more. I'm 180 centimeters tall, so 5'11. And as you can see, I have perfect rest here. It's really comfortable. It really is, believe me. And uh, now I can put on my uh, massage program and I tell you it's the same, uh, it's, it's pretty much the same programs that you have in the front, like the driver head and even three intensities as well. And uh, yeah, you can choose all that. By the way, the display I have is flipping while the seat is flipping as well. So I always get the perfect angle. Okay. Um, and I have a button here I can push to um, use the setting for the passenger seat as well, which I won't do. I will just put uh, push the other button. Now everything is going back to normal business. And uh, while I do this, I can tell you that same in the front, we got air condition here in the rear. Of course, we have a four zone climate control. So every passenger has its own climate if he wants to. And I can heat up the seats with three intensities as well as have air condition in the seats here as well. So I got the seats covered, I guess, right? Yep. I will tell you a bit more about this panel here in a minute. Um, then I got all the privacy blinds here on all four sides that I can activate or disable. And um, I got a bunch of lights. I got one light right here on the B pillar. I got uh, reading lights for both sides and I got an entry light here as well. And if I want to, I have a makeup mirror here, which is illuminated as well. Here, shave. Really, I do. The handle, like in the front, has a wood application here. I have a little hook for my jacket. Another hook is right on the B pillar. And then in the door panels, I got the Bowers and Wilkins speakers as well, illuminated again. Um, I got an ashtray even though it's not a smoker's car and uh, one grip sort of but it's a little compartment as well and uh, down here I got a second compartment and even this one and a half liter bottle fits in here so the boss can drink more than the driver obviously compartment compartment uh, then I've opened this already so two things you can slide down or open um, the climate control, by the way, air outlets in the middle here as well as in the B pillar. Climate control, then two cup holders. They're pretty much the same like in the front, so I'm not going into them too much. And a compartment, and on the rear of the compartment, we got a DVD player and two um, sockets for earphones. Okay. Then uh, we can open this armrest and inside the armrest we find a little table for working. So it's enough and this is like, you know, sort of anti-slip surface. So you can put your laptop here and just work. And I think it's pretty nice. Um, what I like in the S-Class more, of course, is that they have two little tables. But this one is fine as well and it fits in here as well then we got a remote control for the system here for my display that i've uh, closed and the display pretty much shows the same stuff that i've shown you already in the front except that you can watch uh, films here via dvd or usb yep okay got the display covered as well Got 
cut 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 this. And then I can tell you for the kids, uh, first of all, we got a safety belt here that we should use as a passenger, of course. That's the length. So even bigger people can buckle up. And I think you shouldn't have problems with baby shelves and child seats. And the rear of the long version with a waist. Uh, the locks of the safety belts are stiff so kids can buckle up themselves. And here behind the zippers we find the connection for the Isofix hooks. Oh, I forgot this one. Here we got another compartment. That's not really big. And actually you should use this or it's meant to be for the fridge. So you can install a fridge as well. But the fridge will take parts of the trunk, of course. <coughs> so let me quickly show you uh, the touchpad here. First of all, we can release it. And then you can use it in your hand. But I will just leave it inside. It's making noises, so it's really hooked inside. And here we got all the settings we can have. So we can use the ambient light here in, in here as well. I always need to use the home button. The sun protection, I can, you know, use it even here and open and close it this way. The whole seat up, uh, seat setup is uh, in here as well. So if you want to use the massage functions, for instance, you can choose this and change the program. Then climate control, you know, whatever you want, you can use it here. Media radio, it's not activated right now because it's off. The driving information, oops, come on, I didn't want the driving settings, that might be nice. And uh, <coughs> here we can go to other apps and it's give, giving us a warning. So it's a normal Android thing. Turn it off and it gets charged as well. And just that you see the display because you cannot see it really from another point. It's pretty much the same like in the front. All right, comfortable, fine. But now let's drive or before that we'll take a look at the trunk. All right, guys, before we take a look at the trunk, which is not so important for seven series buyers, I guess, but anyhow, you know, gotta have something to say. Uh, we wanna check out the key, and <laughs> the key is pretty cool. It's not only big, I mean, look at this big key. It has one disadvantage, at least for me, well, actually two. First of all, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> it's like, hey, Jan, where are you going? Oh, just going to my Beamer. <laughs> And the other way around, um, it doesn't have a thing where I can put it on my keychain. And I have this, you know, beautiful keychain. Doesn't fit. However, it is pretty awesome. The rear is boring as hell, <laughs> but the front is pretty cool. Because it looks all black, but it's not, believe me. First of all, let's check out the buttons. Open the trunk, lock the, uh, lock the car is a BMW badge, and unlock it. And this is like a favorite key, I guess. If I push... Lock, ooh, look at this, it's magic, you know? It says it's lock and now I can swipe. And uh, no, I don't want this. Well, I could have, you know, put it, <laughs> put it in, in, in English as well, but you know, why? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm sorry, guys. So, first screen is, uh, it shows me the car is locked and the windows are all closed. Second uh, screen is, car's okay. Good. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. And the lights are off. Then we got a reach um, of 204 kilometers with the petrol in the tank. And this is all about the air condition. So I can say on Sunday at 7 o'clock will be my next uh, departure. So please make uh, the car all nice. Well, another disadvantage up here, you see the battery status. And I think you have to charge it via USB, but maybe it's even, uh, you know, wireless charging. I'm not sure yet. Who checks this out? Uh, besides that, um, there's an option that you can remotely park your car, uh, which you can do with the key as well, but it's not a feature that we have in our car. But anyhow, I like it. It's pretty cool. So I could use the key to open the trunk, but that would be way too easy, right? I could use a button in the front as well as a button right here. But I will do some belly dancing here. Woo! 
damn, I hate when this happens, you know? Well, there's a sensor somewhere down here. Oh yeah, finally. I got the key in my pocket, there's a sensor, I'm swiping with my foot and the trunk opens. And here we got a storage volume of 515 liters, which equals 18 cubic feet. And uh, now I would say fast forward while I'm unpacking. Stop! Well, first of all, this is our mighty tripod case. You might know it from several reviews. And the neat thing about it, it's not only fitting this way in the trunk, but as well this way. So we know already this trunk is huge and I like it. Actually, I could buy a 7 Series, you know, because all my equipment fits in there. Come on, stand still. And... Um, this is how the empty trunk looks like. On the left side we got a little compartment and here's the first aid kit, uh, the tire fit and some tools even. Wow, and here's an SD card. That's mine I guess. <laughs> On the other side uh, we got another compartment with some stuff in there. And um, here we got the rings and another ring and there and there to tie up stuff and down here is light even led and that's pretty much the trunk and just because i can here's my tripod case look isn't that cool i think it is and the other way around still cool and i'm not talking about my tripod case but that it fits in here. Okay, uh, what did I forget? My measuring tape. Thanks to Brian, my British friend, I still got it. So, because it got inches and centimeters. It's awesome. Only the British guys can think this way. You have to lift up the stuff 71 centimeters, so 28 inches, and then drop it down 18 centimeters, so 7 inches. You have a depth, <laughs> a depth <laughs> in here of uh, 111 centimeters, I would even say 112 centimeters, so 45 inches. And the width between the width between the wheel arches, we have, um, let me see, uh, what's a 79 centimeters, so 31 inches. But the width between or behind the wheel arches, we even have 150, 100, no, 140 centimeters, which equals 55 inches. And the height, last but not least, at least here at the front, uh, it's uh, 53 centimeters, so almost 21 inches. What I forgot to tell you, the warning triangle is sitting right here, which is important because once the trunk is loaded, you still have it in reach. All right, guys, are you ready? Whoa! Ha! You can load up to 675 kilograms in the uh, long version of our BMW, uh, which equals 1,488 pounds of which you can load up to 100 kilograms or 220 pounds on the roof picture this a seven a bimmer with something on the roof okay you got it okay hold, hold this picture because now we're talking about the hook <laughs> <laughs> You can pull trailers up to a weight of 2.3 tons if they have their own braking system, otherwise you're limited to 700 kilograms. I like to start out my driving impression right here, like I usually do, in uh, just turning the car to see you how it handles, you know, turning around on a tighter road. And I'm already on the green here, I guess. Uh. 
Well, you get an idea. It's a long car, and the turning cycle circle quite needs a bit. But just standing here, turning once and a little bit. That's all you need. All right, guys. I'm cruising on the autobahn with a speed you might know, 80 kilometers per hour, and I'm going in sport now. Let's just pass by those uh, few cars. Um, let me give you a little impression about acceleration. First of all, we got the eight speed uh, transmission and I can push it to the side and get into sport mode here as well for the transmission. And uh, let's rock. Once you're in sport and accelerate and you're not too fast, you can hear the engine trying to sound all sporty. Well, it's an inline six cylinder, so not a V6 or V8. So the sound is not that cool or it's very unique. Let's put it this way. And uh, just for your amusement, I'm pushing the throttle hard, going 210 now. But the guy in front of me is not uh, going my speed, so I have to reduce speed a little bit. It's always this fun stuff. If you have someone in front of you who has a nice car as well, he's not willing to pass on the right side. Okay, sound wise, wind noises, they start being, you know, if you really listen hard, around about 100 kilometers per hour. At 160, I'm driving now 150 kilometers per hour, they're still really soft. I mean, I don't have to raise my voice if I don't want to. Now going 130, 120, and now pushing the throttle. 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, 220, 230, 240, 250, ooh, okay, he's passing, uh, so 240, 250 and 260 top speed yay and you can sort of cruise okay with 260 the wind noises get a little bit louder of course and I have to raise my voice but I mean if you push this big car on uh, on the Autobahn with 260 kilometers per hour what do you expect you know <laughs> um, so wind noises until 180 you still can have a decent conversation and even if you go 260 and you turn on the um, speakers and listen to some music you hardly hear the wind noises so that's really nice and it's so comfortable uh, but i was going to start with the transmission so push it to the left you get in sport using the shifting pedals you get in manual and um, as you can see, that's not fake. I mean, even if I'm standing uh, right now, it shifts really fast. Otherwise, you can use uh, the sh shift stick to shift up and down, like in a sequential gearbox. And um, yeah. Well, if you're in sport or go in a sporty way, you have different, well, you feel how it shifts, but then you want it, right? But even then, it's really decent. Well, once you drive in comfort, you hardly notice the car shifting. That's what you want from an automatic transmission, not really feeling the shifting ways. But I will put it in sport as well, will I? Was I going to tell you something about sport and go on the Autobahn again? What for? Because I can. And I'm German and I can show you. That's the only reason why I'm going on the Autobahn. So sport mode again. Uh, by the way, in sport mode, you get a little bit different suspension setup. The steering gets more direct. And um, steering in the engine performance, you know, in the transmission. Once again, you know, I just started. I'm going 180 now, 190, 200. It's so easy and I couldn't believe that the car has just 226 horses. 
I was expecting much more because it accelerates so neatly, you know. It, it's not getting slower at any point. Uh, but I will go in Eco Pro now, will I? Well, comfort. So, um, going into sport, you will, you, the suspension is getting a little bit stiffer. But that's really a perfect way how they did it because it gets stiffer in terms of driving but not so much in terms of comfort so um, you feel that you have a better road performance uh, but your comfort is not really uh, decreasing increasing decreasing uh, which I like but for sure if you go in comfort it's really it's a dream to drive this car the seats are perfect and you know I've driven those four hours from Munich to Bielefeld home going full speed whatever, whenever I could. It's really hard. You have to concentrate so much. But having, you know, this nice seats, very comfortable, having the massage function and this great, awesome um, suspension setup, it was not so hard. You know, when I got home, well, I was not refreshed, of course, but I didn't feel so bad like I would have expected, you know. So it's really neat. Um, during this drive on the Autobahn, you know, I mean, you see it here, you have traffic, you have two lane Autobahns as well, and you're coming f with 200, 220 from behind, and um, this guy would think, well, I can use the left lane as well and just hop on the left lane for no reason. That's what I had. I had to use the brakes quite a few times um, in, a, in an effective way. And I can say that the brakes work fine. They have no problem with the weight. They do exactly what you want them to do. And that's pretty neat. I like them. Whole car is just awesome. And I'm a Mercedes fanboy. Shame on me. Suspension brakes. Okay. Um, the steering gets affected by the mode you choose as well. So in uh, comfort, it's already direct, I would say. Not direct, direct, sporty direct, but it reacts pretty fast. While in sport, it gets a little bit more direct even. But do you really feel the difference? I don't know. But you gotta know the steering, uh, we got an all wheel drive steering as an option. So with slower speeds, the uh, uh, tires in the rear, they steer in your direction, you know, making the circle round sort of, uh, in order to making <laughs> the turning circle smaller. While with higher speeds or with high speeds on the Autobahn, they go in the different direction to support your steering here. Makes sense. And uh, well, since you can't disable it, at least I don't know how to disable it, um, I cannot tell you the difference. The turning circle is kind of huge, you know, and especially inside the uh, city, you have to maneuver a little bit more than with smaller cars, of course. Uh, but driving on the Autobahn and the country roads, everything is just fine. Steering is perfect, it's good. like it. Did I say I like it again? We have to cut all the like it's out. I'm seeing in a BMW. Okay, we got the steering, we got the suspension, we got the brakes, we got the shifting, and we got the acceleration, right? The power. So everything is covered, I guess. Now let me just uh, add some few words about the assist systems we have in here. So uh, we got a blind spot one, of course. We got an adaptive cruise control. So even if you put a certain speed in here and the guy in front of you is driving slower, it keeps the distance and adapting his speed, sort of. Um, we got a lane keeping support, which is not working right now. Great that I mentioned it. Oh, because I didn't have this baby on, right? Well, we will have to wait. Uh, we got the uh, Bowers & Wilkins premium sound system in here. Wow, I was so excited to hear this because in the Volvo, Bowers & Wilkins is uh, supplying the uh, premium sound system as well, which I liked already a lot. And I heard the new Boomester system in the new E-Class, which was my 
overall favorite, all-time favorite. So I was really curious. I used to work for Bowers and Wilkins. I still love them. I like them. They're doing a good job with their regular speakers. And I was pretty um, interested how the car system here in the 7 Series is. And I was, uh, to be quite honest, I was a little bit disappointed. Those are not bad speakers, don't get me wrong. Sound system is good, works fine, everything is cool. Um, but it's by far not as good as the one in the, um, in the E Class, by far. And I would even say I would prefer the one from the Volvo. Okay, now we're going, uh, slow, or we're going too fast. Going 70, 80, now I got the lane keeping assist. Oops, I was just. So come on, cross the line. For whatever reason. Well, it's easier to use this on the Autobahn, right? <laughs> I don't want to wreck the car. But yeah, that, that was a car, not me. So it does work. <clears throat> For my taste, it's reacting a little bit too late. I don't want it to react whenever it's close to the lane, but already a little bit ahead of uh, countering the lane. So this way, you know, you drive and it steers a little bit too hard, for my taste at least. So, yeah. Both systems together give a good uh, traffic jam assist that I used as well. Works fine, so good. And... Um, all right, guys, coming to the end of our review about the BMW 740Li, you know? And uh, at the end of our reviews, I always sum up a little bit. First of all, I go for fuel consumption. BMW claims fuel consumption of just 7 liters for every 100 kilometers driven, according to the NEFZ cycle. So that's not realistic at all, but however, uh, I've driven this baby now 1,300 kilometers and I have an average fuel consumption of 14.4 liters for every 100 kilometers driven. So I doubled it. But I have to confess, um, last weekend I was um, working at the south of uh, Germany, actually at the very uh, most southern eastern point in Germany. I had uh, three days of work there and I picked up the BMW and drove home and all I wanted to do was getting home. I wanted to get home and so I was driving fast. You know there are quite a few speed limits on the Autobahn nowadays um, and there are quite a few construction areas but um, on a Saturday night, the Autobahn is almost empty. So whenever there was no speed limit, I was going full speed, meaning 162 miles per hour. Yes, on the Autobahn, you're allowed to. And I'm German, I'm allowed to too. And I know how to do it as well. So don't get me wrong, I'm not speeding for any reason, you know, and I'm a careful driver too. So when, whenever there's traffic on the other lanes, I go, for, um, go slower, you know, and check everything and all that but i like to drive fast on the autobahn i really do uh, but driving fast on the autobahn it's a, a 600 kilometers drive it took me four hours um, you waste a lot of fuel of course and so um, if you want to have a realistic number the other day i was driving to hanover which is a 100 kilometers drive and i was driving in the city, starting going to the Autobahn on the country roads and then driving on the Autobahn, parts of it with speed limits, 120 kilometers per hour, the rest open, uh, going 250. Uh, so um, on this drive, uh, it took uh, an average fuel consumption of 10.2, I guess, liters. <coughs> so I think it's a realistic value talking between 10 and 11 liters for every 100 kilometers driven. All right, driving fun. Well, it, whenever I talk about driving fun, I see myself sitting in a sporty car, you know, cornering and all that, and yay, or sitting in an SUV and saying, no, I don't have driving fun. So here we have a big ass sedan. It is, you know, it really is. And it does not even have so much power. I was really amazed. I'm not really checking the specs before I prepare my moderation. So I don't really care how much horsepower I do have, you know, I really don't. Except it's a special car, then I 
obviously no. But here, you know, 740, how much does it have? 400 horses? I don't know, you know? So when I looked up the spec and it says two, uh, 300, what is it? 26, 326, thanks Toby, uh, horses, I was like, no way, it got more, you know, such a sporty car, because I had so much fun driving this car, every day, really, on the Autobahn, it's such a blast, you sit in a very comfortable car, you can still drive very fast, and this way even kind of sporty, and um, well, I, I um, have to confess, I haven't been on country roads too much with the car, but uh, I enjoyed really every drive. And so I say, driving fun, hell yes, it is fun to drive this car, really. It's awesome. Driving comfort, not only sitting in the rear, which I did as well for two hours, um, but especially in the front, it's a very comfortable ride. The seats are awesome. The suspension is awesome. Um, the noise level in the car is awesome. It's so comfortable, you can hardly stand it, you know. But it, it really is a very, very comfortable car. Both thumbs up. Um, usage as a daily driver. Oh, well, you know. You in America would say, yes, this compact car does well in our cities, you know. Me as a German, I say, well, it's a big ass car, you know. So it's hard to handle in the city. Not hard, hard. But um, it is a big car, you know, the turning circle is big. You need to, you know, maneuver back and forwards all the time if you want to go wherever. Uh, so it's not handy in the city at least. But you have a good trunk, good size. Uh, you have space for four grown-ups, plenty of space for four grown-ups. So I say, yes, use it as a daily driver. If you can afford it, okay. And for you guys in America, both thumbs up. Small car, lots of space, very comfortable, good daily driver. All right, that's it. That's it from my side. If you enjoyed the review, please give me a thumb up because that motivates me. If you want to do me something good, share my clips uh, on your social networks like Twitter, Facebook, Google+, or put it in your personal private playlist on YouTube. If you haven't done before, <laughs> please tell your friends, your colleagues about us. Um, our international channel is still a little bit, you know, doing weak so far, and I need your support. I need you. I ask not what you can do for whatever. Um, and uh, besides that, if you want to send me money, obviously I need it, <laughs> uh, you can use uh, services Patreon or Tippy to send us a little money, like a dollar or two uh, every month via the services. Besides that, if you have any questions, please put them below in the comments. I'm a little bit slow with comments right now, but at least I'm reading every comment. So if you want to let me know something or if you have any questions, uh, if I did something wrong, please feel free, you know, that's the common fields are for. Besides that, it's time to go. So I'm saying um, so long. See you next time. The three liter inline six cylinder that comes with a capacity of three liters and um, what have I just gesagt? Have ich schon? Scheiße. I'm not going into pricing. I'm never going into pricing. Machen wir nochmal. Scheiße, es läuft wieder alles. That's the key of the 7 Series BMW and it is quite special.